Hi, this is Professor Jan Mei Chen at California State University, Long Beach. In this video lesson today, we'll look at arithmetic without specific numbers. In particular, we will apply the functional definitions of four arithmetic operations, namely plus, minus, multiplication, and division, to interpret simple abstract mathematical expressions without using specific numbers, and explain where a given mathematical expression involving absolute value plus, minus, multiplication, or division appear on a certain place on the real number line. Let's first recall the meaning of multiplication and division. In a separate video, we talked about the meaning of multiplication. When you do a times b, it gives a sets of b. This a is not just any a. This a is the same a that is used in the multiplication a times b. And a divided by b gives the number of copies of b's in a. For example, 20 divided by 4 is equal to 5. And we read this as there are 5 copies of 4 in 20. Next, we'll focus on building intuitions of the size of simple expressions to be able to mathematize more complex context. The simplest way to do this is to start with the real number line. Suppose the following numbers are known to us on the real number line. Let's also assume that the scale is correct. And notice first that a and b are both greater than zero, which means that they're both positive numbers. But also notice that a is less than one, so it's a fraction of one. And b is greater than one. Let's now practice locating various expressions on the real number line, given what we know about the locations of a, b, and one. Let's start with negative one. To do that, we first find the location of 1, and notice that negative 1 is the opposite of 1 on the number line. Now, by opposite here, we mean the mirror image of 1 on the number line. Every time you see a negative sign in front of a number, you should think of it as taking the mirror image of that number on the real number line, reflecting around the origin, 0. So we measure out the amount from 0 to 1 to know exactly how far 1 is from 0, and take that same amount reflected around 0 on the other side of 0. This tells me that negative 1 lives right about there. Similarly, if you want to find negative a, you would first measure out the distance between 0 and a and take that same amount, make a copy on the other side of 0, and that gives you the location of negative a. Next, we look at where a divided by b is. Well, a divided by b gives the number of copies of b's in a. Now notice that b is greater than a, so we must have a fraction of a copy of b in a. And it looks like taking half of a copy of b would do the job. So here's how you visualize it. This is how big b is. And I want to know how many copies of exactly that amount can fit in to a. Well, if I take half a copy of b, which gives me right about here, this is half a copy of b. And it seems like half a copy of b fits exactly the same amount of a. So the answer to this question, a divided by b, is about half. So to find half on the number line, you first measure out the distance from 0 to 1 and just take roughly half of that. So that gives us a point right about there. So that's where a divided by b lives. Next, we'll look at b divided by a. Well, b divided by a gives the number of copies of a's in b. So we ask ourselves, so how many copies of a can fit into b? So if you measure out the distance between 0 and a and try to fit of that amount into the entire quantity in b, it seems to me that you can fit about two copies of a in b. So the answer to b divided by a is 2. And to find 2 on the real number line, you take the quantity between 0 and 1 and just double that. So you have to further extend your real number line if it's not long enough. So this is exactly where b divided by a lives. Well, notice nowhere in this example we have to use real numbers. Like, for example, let a be about 7 tenths or b be about 1.2. Um, we didn't have to do any of that, and this is exactly what we mean by arithmetic with generalized numbers and without actually using specific numbers to substitute into those symbols to carry out the calculations. So what we've done so far is to build our intuitions of how big or the size of various mathematical expressions such as a divided by b or b divided by a lives on the real number line. Now that we're familiar with how various operations affect size, let's do some exercises on comparing sizes of various mathematical expressions. 
Notice that in the previous example, I gave you a grid to help seeing the sizes better. Let's do our next example without such a grid. Now, given the following number line where the scale is appropriate, try to answer true or false for the following four questions. Now, this is where you want to pause the video and practice these problems on your own and then return to the video once you're done. Well, hopefully you have taken the instructions to try to practice these problems yourself, and now you're here to check the answers. But before you do this problem directly, you wanted to step back and to make some general observations about what you know about the numbers on the real number line. First, we notice that A is a negative number because it lives to the left of zero. B is a positive number and B is greater than one. And if you're only looking at the sizes without worrying about the positive sign or negative sign, then the sizes of A is going to be less than the sizes of B. Now we're ready to proceed. For the first problem, we're comparing A with negative one. So we must know exactly where A and negative ones are. Well, we already know where A is. So let's identify where negative one is. Well, remember, negative means that we're going to take the mirror image of 1. So this is how much 1 is. We'll take exactly that same amount and then put it on the other side of 0. This gives us the location of negative 1. And we notice that a is to the right of negative 1, which means that a is greater than negative 1. So the answer to the first part is false. Next, let's look at the absolute value of a. Well, the definition of the absolute value of a number gives the distance of that number to the origin, zero. Since distance is always positive, that is why absolute value of any number is always positive. So absolute value of A measures exactly the same amount, but on the other side, because it has to be positive. Then the question is asking whether or not the absolute value of A is less than 1. Well, clearly, absolute value of A lives left to 1, which means it's a smaller than 1. That's why the statement is true. Next, let's look at b divided by a. And because a is a negative number, the result of doing this division will end up being a negative number altogether. So whatever you find is a number of copies of a and b, make sure you put it on the left side of 0. And it seems to me if a is about this big, I can fit about two copies of this size in the entire quantity of a. So b divided by a is roughly 2. And remember that a is a negative number, so the answer turned out to be negative 2. So let's find negative 2 on the number line, which is about double the size of negative 1. And this is where b divided by a lives. Now you can compare the location of b over a with negative 1. And since b over a is to the left of negative 1, that means it's a smaller quantity than negative 1. So question number 3 there is true. Lastly, let's look at the comparison between negative a and negative b. Well, currently, a and b are on the number line, but not the negative of them. So we'll take the mirror image of a and b to find the locations of negative a and negative b. And it should be fairly obvious that negative b is to the left of negative a. Hence, negative b is less than negative a. So that makes statement number four false. To summarize, we talked about applying the four arithmetic operations to interpret simple abstract mathematical expressions without actually using any specific numbers. And we also explained with some examples how a given mathematical expressions involving absolute value and the four arithmetic operations appear on the real number line.